Hi there, Andrew Dixon, AJ Design Studio. Following up on a um, video I created yesterday, which was looking at uh, variable pitch patterns on a plain uh, face, and someone asked a question, how about doing it with a curve? So um, I had a quick look today, so I had a think, been thinking about how I might achieve this. Um, had a quick look at um, one possible solution. Um, so I've just modelled up um, a basic model just sort of to prove out the theory. So I'm just going to roll back to the beginning of this model uh, and just sort of briefly cover how I've achieved this outcome. So I've created a boundary. Um, I've made this model is going to be symmetric. Um, same length along the X and the Z. I've created a plane through one of the points on the boundary. Then I've created a sketch um, side spline, which is basically um, what the facets are going to fit through. So in my other video, I um, projected, uh, I, I, I divided a spline equally with segments and then projected those lines down onto another line and that created the variable pitch for my pattern and you could adjust the spline um, with doing this and putting the segments onto a curve. I guess the challenge uh, is that you have to sample the curve length uh, to then divide up a straight line with an equal length to your curve. So to do that, what I've what I've had to do, so I've created a driven dimension length of the spline. So if the spline changes, that length updates, and then I have uh, that length dimension feeds into a global variable side spline. Okay. So the next sketch after the side spline is my actual pitch control. So I've just put this over here on the side just so it's sort of out of the way. Um, so I'll go in there and edit this. So in here, so that dimension that I took off the spline, the length of the spline, the true length, um, drives the length of this line here. So you can see using the same technique as I was using yesterday, having a, a curve up here, um, equal, divided into an equal, um, equally with these points, project the lines down onto this line, that's how I get the variable pitch. So if you change the angle here, it changes the pitch sort of thing. Um, I mean, you can get rid of these dimensions and just drag things around, but I've, I've just defined it this time. So because I've now got my lengths down here on this line, the line is the same length as the spline, I need to be able to um, take these values and then apply them to some facets that will be coincident to my side spline. So to do that, you might have seen in the equations there, I have created a global variable and just basically taken each of these segments, um, taken the dimension, and so that's available to uh, other sketches to use. Um, you might notice, go, well, why have I bothered taking both sides here because it's symmetric? Um, I just did that in case I decided to uh, get rid of the symmetry, um, I'd still have the dimensions available. Okay. So next up was to create the facet sketch. So I've created a same amount of uh, line segments as I have captured over here with dimensions. Uh, and then I've driven those dimensions from those equations. So it's, it's sucked the data out of here and placed it under here. Um, and I have not dimensioned the middle 
spin in there because um, otherwise the sketch will be overdefined. Okay, and then to create um, that surface you saw before, made a surface extrude using those facets like that. Create an axis through the front and right hand plane and then just created a circular pattern. So these are all the same. It's that circular pattern, uh, it's a body pattern. And then I created a boundary surface. So with the boundary surface, it's as simple as um, using the selection manager. So if I delete um, one of these edges over here, it's all lining up anyway, but I'll just go through and show you a reselect, right click selection manager, and then you basically just go through and, and and um, select all the facets, all the segments. Okay. So I'm not putting any boundary conditions on this um, because a, a tangency won't work, obviously, because these side profiles are not tangent to the uh, the input edges geometry. So, so there we go. And now. If I hide that and hide the extrude, um, I can go into the side spline, control here, say 25. Build, you have to do rebuild a couple of times. It's, uh, it's like the pitch control here because it goes through equations. Um, you just have to rebuild a couple of times for the, for the, uh, for the uh, uh, updated dimensions to trickle through to the facet control here. Um, to say I wanted to, I'll just drop that down, um, and maybe, so a couple of rebuilds, and you can see on the rebuilds, uh, after a couple. So, if I want to change the pitch here, if I make this, change this angle on the side to 50, see what that looks like. Okay, so, probably a bit more even, and rebuild, you can see the facets there of, uh, Rebuilt, they're much more even. Uh, it's going to get tighter in the middle. So there you can see the, um, the pattern's updated. The variable pitch. Obviously, this could be a bit of a nightmare if you wanted to have like a hundred um, segments along a spline. Um, yeah, it could be a bit of a nightmare, but this is just a test case. Um, just a little experiment. So, because these dimensions along here are being um, captured as variables, there's no reason that this spline that I put the facets on, you could uh, create a 3D sketch and insert a, a spline in 3D space and then put the facets along there. Um, so, there's a lot of flexibility. Um, also, using this technique here, using um, facets along a spline and then using them to the facets to make a um, boundary surface is a great way to uh, divide up a surface if you, uh, if you want to find um, you know where create some lines as control geometry you can use face curves of course but face curves um, harder to control if you wanted to have some variable pitch uh, on there yep so I thought I'll try something else as well. Um, you know, it doesn't have to be facets like this. Um, so I create another file here and basically replace the facets with um, arcs and then just dimension those off. So those are all concave. The texture, and again, it updates. Um, Takes a couple of updates for that to trickle through. Um, also, you can you can invert your spline. I've found doing it in a few, you know, instead of make a big jump in the dimension, just do it in a few uh, smaller changes first, because sometimes the facets uh, will overlap. Okay, now I'm going to go negative 
five here, so we're going to unboot the unboot the pattern. Okay, so yeah, again, this is just an example. Um, not sort of um, saying this is um, directly how someone might use uh, this, but it's just nice to have have control over um, pictures of things, especially in uh, three dimensional space like that. Okay. Um, Hope that was hope that's useful for someone out there. Um, Andrew Jackson, AJ Design Studio. I'll be back again with um some more SolidWorks stuff in the future. Okay, bye.